I remember this. So yeah, it's been in the gr greenhouses, and obviously there's been no water. So as you can see, the leaves have started to droop. Now this is going to be planted out here. It's going to have a bit of a shock because it's quite a windy site as well. So a good thing to do is just to remove the leaves that are a bit limp. As long as it has some leaves here it will be fine okay so one of the things I'm going to do now is just tear off some of these limpy leaves and then plant it in because it has some lovely growth here and we don't want it for the plant to be under too much stress by having to have water to um, go towards these other leaves here when the root system has been disturbed okay so that's what I'm going to do now get this ready oh, right, let's get cracking now when doing this I always find that sometimes we treat plants as if they're really fragile creatures as it were but plants are pretty hardy so don't be scared to do what I just did here and just give it a little rip off or whatnot because these things happen in nature you know things get broken things get eaten plants are more robust than sometimes we give them credit for didn't help that I couldn't actually find my secateurs as well, <laughs> otherwise I would use them. Alright, I'm also going to do the same with this root here. As you can see it's got a large portion here coming across. Now this means I've got to dig a bigger hole. I don't want to do that. So what I can do, now remember, there's not much leaf on this here now plant isn't really going to miss a bit of this chunk as long as it has some roots to sustain itself it'll be fine so what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to remove a lot of this woody stuff here in fact looking at it just down here close in I could probably just take it off like this and now has something that's more easier to plant. Okay, so it's got its roots, which I'm happy with. It's got some healthy leaves, which is good to go. So I'm looking at this edible perennial bed and I see some space just here. Now the good thing about this, as this plant is quite small at the moment and we can grow it underneath this bud layer just here. First things first, I'm just going to push away the wood chippings which are breaking down around this site, this part of the allotment. I'm just going to make a little well out here. Now remember that if something gets too big, like our cardine will do, it will get bigger than the current that it's currently going to be planted next to. 
we can always harvest it so that we can keep it in check as it were that's one of the things I'll be doing when I go around I have a look at what I can harvest and I'll have a look at any plants that I need to keep in check and I'll harvest them more okay so now we made a nice little well just here we're gonna pop our little cardoon in I'm gonna dig a little hole doesn't need to be too big because now we've made a nice small uh, now we've took off a chunk of this woody root so we can make a small hole now so we're just going to do this and we're just going to pop her in like so we get a bit deeper than that it's there I'm going to backfill it and we're going to put all of the half broken down wood chippings around our cardoon like so there we go we have one newly planted cardoon plant and what I'll do now is any other stragglers like this that are in the annual beds or where they shouldn't be I will do the same process and plant those like I've done here and because I'm coming down in the winter I can do this because I can see which areas of the plot in the edible perennial hedgerow a bear so now I've got a good uh, good um, indication of where I can plant these evergreen tasty crops okay Okay, so one of the things I'm going to do today is dig this perennial bed here, practically spent, and just dig it and maybe do a little bit of light digging over. From the logs there, that's a perennial bed. So this part here is the annual bed, and to the logs over here, which is the perennial bed, which makes part of the wildlife corridor, the edible perennial hedgerow. So I'm not going to film it. What I'm doing, I'm just going to dig it over and get cracking. So I shall see you in a bit. Okay, so all you notice here, this is one of the ends of a perennial bed. Now, this isn't well established and it's not that well stucked or stacked as it were. Um, as you can see, there's a few cardoons here, but there's a lot of space for other things. So what I'll do is I'll weed this out and then when I'm moving more perennials that I see around or if I divide anything I know I can put stuff into this space um, and start building up that way and that's how I'm doing this site it's a much cheaper way of doing things uh, otherwise you'd have to buy a lot of perennials in one go right let's get cracking great thing about after a period of rain is that it's really easy even just to do weeding by hand not that I need to in this bed but weeds just come out much more easy after a good rain. So while digging these beds over, I've got some kale that I've harvested. All I'm gonna do is simply look through the plant and then take out any good leaves and compost the rest. Okay, a couple of interesting treasure finds we've got today when digging our beds. I've got to be quick because the wind is picking up and it may rain. This is our canna tuber. You can see here, what's a rhizome as it were, the canna. You notice it's been left in the bed outdoors for a good bit of time now. Perfect condition, nice and strong. I should probably put this somewhere, I will put this somewhere sheltered now that I've dug it up. Let's compare it with our Drusum artichoke crown. Uh, obviously the soil that it was planted in, I mean, it wasn't the most 
nutrient best at the moment but as you can see lots of holes in there I'm not too sure whether to take this bits off and to propagate it maybe at a time I'll plant it again when I actually enrich the soil to see how it does but you can see here it's got a lot of holes in it to me it suggests that sometimes crops which are not as commonly grown might fare a bit better if I recall you can actually use the can of tubers rhizomes oops, for uh, a sort of food and if I, if I recall from memory these originated from South America so I'm interested to see what just to research to brush up my knowledge what I can do with these as you can see it's lovely you know these were often told to leave in greenhouses or whatnot but this was just left in the bed I've got some in a polytunnel well what if you can define what my what is actually a polytunnel it's more of a hoop that's barely has a cover on um we've got some over there but yeah looking nice condition here so I yes, just wanted to show that uh I found it quite interesting this little thing uh and I'll see you in a bit guys So here we have it, another annual bed dug over roughly. What I'll do is I'll put some rotted down horse manure or whatever I can get on there on these beds. Just one more big one just to do here. You also notice as we go over, so here's a classic example of the layout. So here's the annual bed, then the end part of it goes into the perennial area. So these are the cardoons here. Got dog rows, we've got other things here, here, currants. So this will never get touched. And the reason why it's at the end of the beds here, because originally the beds were going uh, horizontally, whereas had I uh, known what I know now about the site, I'd have done it vertically. So the ends here are where the perennials are. So any perennial crops that I see creeping into the beds, like a strawberry plant or whatnot. Or the cardoons, they'll simply be dug up and moved into the annual, um, into the perennial surrounding beds. So there it is, guys. Uh, the weather is starting to cloud over, as you can see behind me. Here, the wind is picking up, and I think it might rain. So I'm going to call it a day. This is success. We dug over another annual bed, and we've done half of another annual bed, and we propagated some edible perennials into new areas as well as taking our beetroot harvest and doing a little bit of weeding. So I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to head off home because I'm going to start raining soon. Right. I'll see you when I see you guys. Take care.